It's easy to let our busy lives get in the way of our spiritual fullness. Today, find out how two simple prayers can change your life every day in only 21 seconds. Right now on Jewish Voice with Jonathan Burnus. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, where we help you to discover the Jewish roots of your Christian faith. I'm Jonathan Burnus. You might not realize this, but you're only 21 seconds away from a completely different life. Today's guest says that in the time that it takes to recite the most famous prayer in the Bible, you can be totally transformed. Please welcome the author of 21 Seconds to Change Your World, Dr. Mark Rutland. <laughs> Dr. Rutland, welcome back. I just want to start by saying this has been a tremendous week for me personally because I had taken for granted the Lord's Prayer and talking with you has really revitalized mm. my appreciation and commitment to pray this prayer, not just as a, as a rote prayer, uh, as, as a as responsive reading, but to get back in and pray it with faith. Why is it that this the prayer has seemed to diminish to this this uh, confession that we that we don't connect to our mind anymore. Well, I've it just got a, seems that way. I, I think it's uh, I think it's because of what happened to it in church is a large part of it. It just became it kind of blended in with the woodwork of liturgy. It just became another thing that we said or did. I've got a good friend who's a Jesuit priest, and he said in the Catholic community particularly, it became associated with punishment through the confessional. So he said, you go to the confession and say, you know, Father, forgive me for I've sinned. And you tell him what you did. And he says, okay, say five Hail Marys and five Our Fathers. So you repeat the Lord's Prayer. But what about evangelical Christians? Do you think we just, we've, we've, lost that, we've lost that prayer to some degree? Well, I think to a certain Stop extent, praying it. it happened. In, I grew up in the Methodist church, and I think uh, to a certain extent, it became part of just sort of the fabric. We took it for granted, as you said. Then along came the charismatic renewal movement, of which I'm a child and the Pentecostal world, and it felt traditional. It felt liturgical. So we laid it aside. We're not going to use it anymore. And they wanted more expansive, liberated prayer. I'm very in favor of free prayer. This is not a substitute. This is, this is a seed prayer. This is to get it started. I like what you said, the ether to crank the engine on a cold day. And this is, this is the thing to get it started. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't pray free prayer. But I think a lot of times the charismatic movement kind of, I had one, uh, one guy kind of jump me over the Lord's Prayer. He said, I'm not praying, give us this day our daily bread. I said, why not? Jesus told us to. He said, no, that's kindergarten prayer. He said, I want miracles. I want abundance. I don't want God to dole out breadcrumbs. But that verse doesn't mean breadcrumbs. It means Today, I have complete confidence God will take care of me. We're in a dark place, and this prayer became your lifeline. Yes, I struggled on and off through junior high school, from junior high school onward at various times. Not, not frequently, but at various times, just seasons of feeling that the ground was going out from under me, of darkness, and what I called depression. And uh, then uh, when I was at uh, Southeastern University in Lakeland, Florida, at a time of tremendous success, um, uh, one of the fastest growing regionally accredited Christian universities in the United States. I really fell into a dark place. It, it really became terrible. And I thought I wasn't, I thought I wasn't going to pull out of it. And the Lord led me back to the Lord's Prayer and then Psalm 23. And I began, Jonathan, just saying them, praying them over and over again, driving in my car when I would go for a walk. Think if you walk a mile how many times you can pray the Lord's Prayer, 21 seconds each time, back to back, or substituting, or uh, combining it with the, with the 23rd you Psalm. You actually heard the Lord speak to you in the midst of your darkness, right? What did He say to you? Yes, and I mean, not, a, <coughs> not an audible voice, but the inner voice. I, I felt really that a, a voice of dark accusation. You know, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren, but he doesn't just accuse us to God, he accuses us to us. Yes. And he said, you don't have a prayer. I heard it in the dark of the night. What a lie. Oh, it was a horrible lie, but it nearly buckled me because he knew exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking, maybe I don't have a prayer. Maybe I'm not going to get out of this this time. And I, when that happened, then the Lord said in my heart, I heard his voice say, 
You do have a prayer. I gave you a prayer. Why won't you use it? You had to really pray your way, confess your way it, out of darkness. It was a battle. A, it was a battle, but it was a battle where I felt I had something, I needed something to do, something to hold on to. You, know what, you see what I'm saying? I needed that uh, handholds to cur- start pulling up out of that. And the Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord's Prayer, the 23rd Psalm. My practical mind needed that to hold on to. And it became I, the steps that brought I, me I up. I feel so strongly in my spirit that there's people watching that really need to, uh, to, to grab hold of this. This is for you. You're in, this is in the midst of great success. And maybe everything looks great to the people around you, mm. but you know that you're in a dark place. You're in a dark place with, uh, in your relationship with God, maybe in your relationship with a spouse or, or other family member. This is an opportunity for you to reconnect with God. A really simple, this is a bite-size uh, uh, truth that we can, we can just bite into and, and change, our, change our reality. The brilliant economy of language in the, 23rd, in the, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, in the 21 second prayer of the Lord's Prayer. Think if we had scholars from all over the world for 10 years who worked together to come up with the perfect prayer. If we set them a goal, Come up with a prayer to touch every need, inner and circumstantial in human life in 21 seconds. They could never do it. And Jesus taught it. It's the perfect prayer, the perfect words. Now you connect this with Psalm 23. You you say that those were really the, the, the 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 two prayers that you were able to pull yes. yourself out with the two ropes. Yes. I, I, I began to get in touch more with the prayers, with the Lord's Prayer and the 23rd Psalm. I even began to feel in touch with the two authors. I began to identify with David as I never had. I began to identify and find the, if it's the Lord's Prayer, I wanted the Lord of the Prayer. I began to mm. find a closer touch with Jesus and a closer touch with, Jesus, with David. You were pointing out it's, it starts with the acknowledgement of who God is, that God is. God is. And then finishes with, with, with eternity. The eternity. Of so go back and explain that to us. Jesus began, our Father who is, David said, the Lord is. They both end with forever. Jesus said, Yea, the, uh, Jesus said the, um, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. He's summarizing, actually, it's a Davidic prayer we know from Chronicles. But he says, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. David says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. forever. You talk about these prayers bringing healing yes. as well. They actually can bring healing in every dimension. Yes. In fact, David tells us uh, straight out what is the essence of the 23rd Psalm. He says, he restores my soul. David is a man who knew something about soul restoration, of bouncing back, not just from a dark place, but from a place of absolute personal ruination to come back. He restores my soul. But it's in the present tense operative. It is to say it's something God is doing in me all the time. It's part of his, it's his work, the process of redemptive grace. Then Jesus tells us, he, he editorializes on the Lord's Prayer after he teaches it. And he says, for if you will forgive, you can be forgiven. So the connection between soul restoration, soul, our inner psyche, the self of us, the, the healing, the restoration of that is tied perfectly to forgiveness. We're going to have to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we'll talk more with Dr. Rutland about protection from spiritual forces. Some of you are under attack and God is greater and this prayer will help you to come into that reality. And uh, then later, I'm going to answer some of the questions that you, our viewers, have been asking. Questions about the Bible, about Israel, Jewish customs and traditions, and end time events. It's a new segment that we call Ask the rabbi just ahead. If you're struggling with sickness, depression, or death, you're missing out on the abundant life promised in Scripture. But you can change that in just 21 seconds a day. 21 Seconds to Change Your World by Dr. Mark Rutland offers surprising solutions to the tough problems we all face. 21 seconds can literally change your life. This amazing book reveals the prayer secret that took Dr. Rutland from broken to blessed. A prayer secret 
that will get the Holy Spirit working on your behalf now. If Satan makes house calls, so does the Holy Spirit. This is an easy to use guide to a lasting Holy Spirit breakthrough you need. Filled with moving real life stories and powerful insights, this book will help you discover how 21 seconds can change your world and unlock blessings. Don't wait. Order 21 Seconds to Change Your World for your donation of $29 or more. When you do, we'll sow two special gifts into your life, the Expanding Kingdom Booklet and the Expanding Kingdom CD by Rabbi Jonathan Burnus. Want to grow your finances and career, improve your health, and increase your happiness? You'll do just that when you understand the biblical law of expansion that's clearly explained in these two great resources. Small enough to fit into your purse or pocket, you can take these life-changing teachings wherever you go. We will send you all three of these gifts for your donation of $29 or more. Your donation doesn't just provide these great resources to improve your life. It also lets you play an important role in helping to improve the lives of Jews worldwide, like these Holocaust survivors in Israel. And your donation helps provide crucial medical, dental, and eye care to Jewish communities and their neighbors worldwide who suffer from poverty, disease, and despair. Most importantly, when you support Jewish Voice Ministries, you play an important role in fulfilling Scripture to tell the Jewish people that their Messiah has come. But there is so much more to do. The need is urgent. Remember, God said that He will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people, but your gift of $29 or more will get three great resources that can bless you. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, Please specify offer 1332 when giving $29 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. Welcome back. I'm talking with Dr. Mark Rutland, uh, who's written a new book, 21 Seconds to Change Your World. In literally 21 seconds, that's how long it takes to recite this prayer, your world can change. And you said this is the most important book that you've ever written. Yes, you've written many. If this turned out to be the last book I ever wrote, then I'm satisfied. It's, uh, I waited 10 years to write this book. Every time I started to write, I felt a check. Not yet, not yet. I waited more than 10 years. Then I spoke on this at uh, Free Chapel with Jensen Franklin in Gainesville, Georgia. And afterward, Jensen called me aside and he said, Dr. Rutland, please write a book about this. And the Lord said, now go. So I, I waited more than 10 years. I wanted to write a journey and not an idea. And, and those are the most powerful. And I, what, it, what impresses me about the book is it's so powerful. It's, it's, it's not a long read, but it's an experience. It, it's, it's something that you've lived through and you can, you can give testimony, this works. This changed my life. It changed my life. It's changed the lives of many. I've used it as counseling all the time. And I kept wanted to keep it brief and readable because I wanted men to read it. Jonathan, one of the problems, you know as well as I do, one of the problems is getting men to read. And I wanted men to read it. And men are read. This is the first book I've ever written where at events, people don't buy one or two. They buy 10, 12, 15, 20 of these and, and carry them to send to men, soldiers, friends, relatives, and, and it's, it's been, we it's need, taken off need, like a shot. We need praying men. Yes. We need praying men, not, this in the, not just in this country, but we need praying men that, that are plugged into the Lord and can make a difference. Prayer will make a difference. So ladies, get a copy for your husband, for your uh, kids. Really, we, we, wanna, we wanna sew this out to you. We'll tell you Praise how in a little while. But Dr. Rutland, uh, one of the things you talk about with the Lord's Prayer in Psalm 23, is there's a protection against the attack of the enemy, which is very important because many that are watching are experiencing a, a, a terrible battle right now. Yeah, I teach uh, management and leadership in addition to this. And uh, whenever you talk about accounting, one of the things they always ask you is, what, are, what assumptions are this based on? I'm assuming this interest rate will happen. I'm assuming this. So there are certain assumptions that underlie both the Lord's Prayer 
and the 23rd Psalm. And one of those is, one of those assumptions feels like a negative assumption, and that is that there is evil and there are enemies. David says that he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. He doesn't say if there are enemies. So there are enemies, there are enemies of our soul, and there is evil. Deliver us from evil. Jesus wouldn't say deliver us from evil if there isn't evil. So the assumptions of God's reality, God's eternity, God's providence is up against the reality that there is an enemy of my soul. There are enemies in life. There are people, this is a hard thing for naive and idealistic young people to understand. There are people that hate you. There are people that hate what you believe in, what you stand for. It's certainly, what is, what is anti-Semitism? What is that? It's some kind of a spiritual reality of hatred. David knew that. Jesus knew that. And both of them deal with the reality of God's protection and presence. I pray deliver us from evil over my country, over my kids, over my grandchildren, over my ministry and over my life. Deliver us from evil. The reality that we are just, we, we're, we become dull to if we're not spiritually awake mm. is that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, yes. but principalities and powers. It's a, it's, a very, it's a very dark spiritual reality, but we have, we have victory. We do indeed. So people that are watching that are going through financial challenges, uh, that may be fighting a terminal, terminal illness, uh, separation of, of a loved one, they're facing a div a possibly a divorce, or in the midst of a divorce right now, how will this prayer in Psalm 23 help them get through this? All right, that's a very good point. How does it help you get through it? It doesn't mean that everything changes. I'm not saying use the Lord's Prayer as a magic charm. I'm saying that in the midst of everything we're going through, the Lord's Prayer and, the, and Psalm 23 allow us to reconnect with God, the author of the prayers, in such a way that we are able to go through. David says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we, we do have to walk through those things. But He is with us in it. He comforts us. He protects us. His presence is the promise of both of these. I just feel, I felt led for you to, to, to have you do this now for quite a while, 21 seconds. I want you to pray the Lord's Prayer right now. Good. And I just want you to receive this at home in the audience. I believe you're gonna pray it with a real anointing. And I want you to get this into your spirit right now. And I hope everyone will pray it with us. Pray it right where they are. Pray it right out loud. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Receive that. And be, <laughs> I want that to ignite something in you to pray that and pray that 21 seconds and it can change your life. Hey, um, I want you to, we're, we're Jewish voice. We're helping people to discover the Jewish roots of their faith. These are Jewish prayers. You, yes. you talked about that in an earlier program and you have a story of a Jewish professor. Share that testimony yeah, with us. When I was, Jonathan, when I was in undergraduate school, I did my bachelor's degree at the University of Maryland right at the end of the Civil War. And uh, uh, my, uh, my literature, world literature professor was a young, handsome, very engaging uh, Jewish professor and who was a secular and he was a very, um, very aggressive atheist. You know, he denied everything and he pounded on it and he made it miserable for everybody that believed in God the whole time. One day, one girl asked him, we were in the poetry section of the semester and she said, what do you think is the greatest poem ever written? And he said, oh, I know what it is. It's the 23rd Psalm. Well, we were, we were pretty taken back. Here's this secular atheist saying 23rd Psalm. And so, you know, girls are bolder than boys. And she said, well, I don't understand that. You've been telling us you're an atheist. And here's what he said to us. He said, he said a year ago, our 18-month-old daughter died of sits. Woke up one morning, our beautiful little daughter is dead in the bed, in the crib. He said, my wife is a practicing Catholic. He said, I'm a secular Jew. She wanted to have a priest at the graveside service. And he said, we nearly got a divorce over it. He said, I didn't want that old priest to come and say mumbo jumbo over my dead baby. But he said, I finally yielded 
brought him, he said, as they lowered that little coffin into the grave, that priest recited the 23rd Psalm. And he said, for just a moment, I knew there was a God in Israel. He said, if, if even for a second, a single poem can make a secular atheist know again the God of his childhood, that's the greatest poem ever written. Powerful. We have so much more to cover, but this, I want to thank you for being on the program oh, this week. It has it sparked so much in me, and I hope it sparks something in you. These are prayers that I think need to, to be reactivated in your life, and really, 21 seconds will change your life. We want to sow Dr. Rutland's book, 21 Seconds to Change Your World into Your Life. In just a second, we'll tell you how you can get it. Up next, I answer questions from our viewers on our Ask the Rabbi segment. Stay tuned. That was terrific. If you're struggling with sickness, depression, or death, you're missing out on the abundant life promised in Scripture. But you can change that in just 21 seconds a day. 21 Seconds to Change Your World by Dr. Mark Rutland offers surprising solutions to the tough problems we all face. 21 seconds can literally change your life. This amazing book reveals the prayer secret that took Dr. Rutland from broken to blessed. A prayer secret that will get the Holy Spirit working on your behalf now. If Satan makes house calls, so does the Holy Spirit. This is an easy to use guide to a lasting Holy Spirit breakthrough you need. Filled with moving real life stories and powerful insights, this book will help you discover how 21 seconds can change your world and unlock blessings. Don't wait, order 21 seconds to change your world for your donation of $29 or more. When you do, we'll sow two special gifts into your life the Expanding Kingdom booklet, and the Expanding Kingdom CD by Rabbi Jonathan Burness. Want to grow your finances and career, improve your health, and increase your happiness? You'll do just that when you understand the biblical law of expansion that's clearly explained in these two great resources. Small enough to fit into your purse or pocket, you can take these life-changing teachings wherever you go. We will send you all three of these gifts for your donation of $29 or more. Your donation doesn't just provide these great resources to improve your life. It also lets you play an important role in helping to improve the lives of Jews worldwide, like these Holocaust survivors in Israel. And your donation helps provide crucial medical, dental, and eye care to Jewish communities and their neighbors worldwide who suffer from poverty, disease, and despair. Most importantly, when you support Jewish Voice Ministries, you play an important role in fulfilling scripture to tell the Jewish people that their Messiah has come. But there is so much more to do. The need is urgent. Remember, God said that he will bless those who bless the Jewish people. Your gift of any amount will bless the Jewish people. But your gift of $29 or more will get three great resources that can bless you. Call the number on your screen now to partner with Jewish Voice. You can also click or write with your gift of support by going to our website, jvmi.tv, or writing to us at Jewish Voice, Post Office Box 6, Phoenix, Arizona, 85001. To receive your gifts, please specify offer 1332 when giving $29 or more. Don't wait. Call, click, or write today. We get hundreds of questions from our viewers every week on many topics related to the Bible, faith, Israel, Jewish customs and traditions, and last day's prophecy. So let's take a few minutes to answer some of these questions. First of all, Margaret asks, can you explain how believers were baptized in the early church and in whose name they were baptized? It was probably done by an officiant from the um, from land and the person immersed themselves in water. I believe it was a full immersion. Uh, it was, of course, before the time of Jesus, uh, mikvah existed. The, the immersion existed as part of cl the cleansing ritual to prepare oneself to worship the Lord. We have lots of archaeological evidence for this. And then John, of course, baptized. Uh, and then later, the the uh, pro the uh, ritual of baptism, the rite of baptism, was in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, 
uh, through the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so many Messianic Jewish congregations today will uh, let people immerse themselves. And so I'm not sure, but I think that was likely uh, the form of baptism in the first century. The next question comes from Donna who wants to know, what is the counting of the Omer? What significance does it have today for non-Jewish people? Great question, Donna, thank you. The Omer is the four, seven weeks of seven, the, the seven period of seven, 49 days, the 50th being uh, Shavuot in Hebrew or Pentecost, and it was really a harvest celebration. So you have Passover, which of course is the exodus out of Egypt, and then a counting of 50 days, and then you had the first harvest, which was a wheat, the wheat harvest, and uh, that harvest feast was fulfilled with the, the first believers coming to faith. So Pentecost, the birthday of the church, is really Shavuot, the outpouring of God's Spirit on His people. But it was a, it was a um, 50 day countdown to the first uh, harvest of wheat. Last question that, that uh, I'll take comes from Frank, who's curious, who are the two witnesses uh, in reference to the book of Revelation? Well, I don't have the answer to that one. I can only tell you that uh, many speculate Moses and Elijah. One, because the body of Moses was never found and Elijah, of course, was taken to heaven. And they're the two that appear with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but it's what you'll find in most uh, end time literature. Well, we love hearing from you. You can write to us uh, by going to our website, jewishvoice.tv, or you can go on to our uh, Facebook page. Who knows, maybe your question will be read on one of our upcoming programs. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Before I leave you, I want to remind you, as I do in every program, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122.6 tells us, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. So if you want to prosper, pray for Israel. Until next time, I'm Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Join Jewish Voice Ministries as we tour the Holy Land and celebrate Israel 2017. It's time to honor the 50-year anniversaries of Jewish Voice and the liberation of Jerusalem. On this trip, you'll stay in five-star accommodations as we tour Mount Carmel, Nazareth, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives, Upper Room, and more. You'll see Jonathan Burness commemorate the recapture of Jerusalem right where it happened. We'll also visit an Israeli military base and enjoy a Bedouin meal. You can renew your marriage vows on the Sea of Galilee and participate in an immersion ceremony at the Jordan River. As an added bonus, you can even visit Eilat, the Red Sea, and world-famous Petra. Act now before this once-in-a-lifetime event sells out. Call and speak with our events coordinator to learn more exciting details about Celebrate Israel 2017 or visit jvmi.org slash Israel.